Hey everyone, today I want to talk about ideology according to Louis Althusser. Uh, I'm specifying that because ideology can assume a number of different forms depending on who you read. So today, just in relation to Louis Althusser and his Marxist approach. Now before jumping into that, if you want to follow me, you can do that at theory underscore and underscore philosophy on Instagram that is, uh, to see mostly pictures of my cats. If you want to help me out, you can like, share, subscribe, you know, tell your friends. Who knows, they might like it. Uh, if you want to help me monetarily, you can do that with the links below, but no pressure. And if you're listening to this in podcast form, you can find the video on YouTube. And if you're listening to this on YouTube, you can find it in podcast form pretty much anywhere you get podcasts, but there's a link for it in the description. And there shouldn't be any ads there, which is obviously better than, than ads. Now, let's, let's jump into it. Now, I should say, because we can't, I can't just whitewash this, Louis Althusser was a pr pretty problematic uh, dude for a few different reasons. I mean, he's pretty famously said that uh, he didn't read half the stuff he claimed to have read. Uh, he killed his wife. Very problematic man. Uh, so we can't just, I'm not just going to pretend that that doesn't exist. But now confronting that, we can still take stuff from what he says because it's, it's important. And one of his really big contributions was discussing ideology as a tool to maintain capitalism, which is pretty vague. So let me try and unpack it a little bit. So kind of before Althusser, in Marxist thought, the idea was that the economic conditions, what is called the base, influenced the superstructure, which is where we find things like religion, like education, uh, healthcare, government, all of these institutions were a product of the specific economic conditions of the time. And so a materialist Marxist approach could ostensibly look upon any kind of social organization and determine how it operates according to its economic conditions just by looking at them. So it could derive from those conditions the reasons why various superstructures or su certain elements or institutions within superstructures operated the way that they did. So Louis Althusser, reading this, had a problem with it because he was like, well, this, you know, communist revolution isn't happening. People aren't rising up and, you know, uh, overtaking their capitalist overlords. What's going on? And for him, he wanted to ascribe more value to what was happening in the superstructure than just saying that it's just a product of the economic conditions. So he added to that formula to say that actually there are some pretty important things going on in the superstructure to maintain cycles of exploitation. So what we learn in school, what we learn in, if you're religious, what we learn in religion or church or, or whatever, uh, what we learn from our politicians, all of these things are meant to keep us waking up in the morning, working our nine to five, so that someone can extract surplus value from us, you know, through, through surplus labor, and essentially continue the cycle of exploitation. So in that way, it wasn't as though, for Louis Althusser, that a materialist approach to capitalism simply looked at the material conditions of production and you know, consumption, but started to look at these institutions and ideology as being material themselves because they have material effects. So for him, ideology, what was in the superstructure, is material. It can be traced to the economic conditions, but it has real effects in that it also continues certain cycles of exploitation. Now he attributes certain status to some institutions as opposed to others in this formula, where he says that some uh, institutions operate in a more direct way to maintain these cycles of oppression. Now these are what he calls repressive state apparatuses. Now these are probably the, the most overt examples would be like the police, the military, um, you know, intelligence agencies, any other kind of disciplinary institution that punishes people for falling out of line. Now he contrasts that 
with ideological state apparatuses. And ideological state apparatuses maintain a certain ideological status quo in, in a lot more gentle way, like schools, hospitals, religion, that don't you know, stick a gun in your face and tell you to operate a certain way, but, you know, they operate by a logic of exclusion. If you fail to accommodate uh, what they expect of you, which is a kind of punishment in its own way, but it's not direct. So we have these two forms, these two kind of institutional formations that maintain ideology in a specific way. You have the repressive state apparatuses and ideological state apparatuses. One of them is more direct and more punishing. One of them is a little appears to be more gentle, but is meant to maintain the status quo. Now this kind of dovetails with another pretty important idea in his work, and that is the idea of interpolation, where he says that within ideology, people become subjects, and they become subjects through what he calls interpolation. Now interpolation from the, from the French, uh, interpellé means to, to hail. So he gives the example of a police officer yelling at someone, calling, begging their attention, saying, hey, you there. And in that moment, you don't see yourself as, you know, an individual that is free of their own devices. In that moment, you are suddenly a subject to that powerful person's gaze. And you, you shape yourself in that way. You respond in a very specific way. Whereas if it was just some random person on the street, you wouldn't have that same kind of embodied response. So here's another example about how it's material in that it has real effects, but it actually constitutes us as certain kinds of subjects in that way. And this in many ways for Althusser precedes our lives where before we are even born, and this is an example he gives, we are, in at least in the Western kind of uh, Christian context, we are given our father's last name before we're even born, or barring, you know, French Canadian contexts, uh, we are given just without knowing it, our father's last name before we're even born. And so he says that before we're even in this world, we have been interpolated, we've been uh, kind of entered into a certain ideological frame before we've even arrived there. And all of these mechanisms are necessary to and to just use a pretty vulgar term, to just kind of brainwash us to keep us within line and to keep us operating in a very uh, coherent, formulaic way. And when we step out of line is when the repressive state apparatuses come in and they directly punish people who fail to step in line. Now, one example that we can think about with this in how uh, this ideological system that we currently find ourselves in is meant to protect capital and is meant to protect capitalist interest, we can think of the ways in which after the 2008 financial crisis, only one person, I I'm, think it was only one person was given jail time for, you know, the predatory actions of many, you know, investment bankers and, and, and all of these other very predatory uh, capitalist um, efforts done by people to essentially enrich themselves at the expense of millions, maybe even upwards of a billion people. And only one person got jail time for that. But if someone were to steal like a loaf of bread to feed their family, they would get, uh, who knows, maybe months in jail if that, or a, a huge fine that they would never be able to pay. And so if we interrogate that, we might wonder, well, is, are one of these things really worse than the other? Is stealing a loaf of bread more punishable than disenfranchising nearly a billion people? And it, it seems strange that we would even say that you know, there could be a possible comparison there, yet our justice system punishes one of those parties significantly more than the other. Now, I'm in no way saying that you should steal from people, that's, that's ridiculous. But it's just about interrogating the basic assumptions about what constitutes proper action, what constitutes improper action, and how those things that are punished that function within ideology, according to Althusser, to maintain certain capitalistic relations while 
you know, disenfranchise, which is, you know, part of that is to disenfranchise people, to continually disenfranchise people in the meantime. And yeah, that's more or less it. Uh, th you know, there's a little bit more to it that I just didn't, chose not to go into. But if there's anything that I should have mentioned, I'd love to hear about it, uh, or any other kind of comments or complaints. I'd love to hear about it. Uh, if you want more on Marxist stuff, click, it'll be on one of these sides. Uh, and yeah, catch you next time.